Another sold out crowd here at the Bob Devaney Sports Center. 8,200 plus in attendance for this battle of top five teams, Minnesota and Nebraska. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. We'll start with the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Of course, the Tap Twins in the starting lineup, as well as Samantha Seliger Swinson, the sophomore setter for the Gophers. Alyssa Gaynor and Katie Shaw is the DS for Minnesota. Hugh McCutcheon is the head coach in his fifth season, 119. Check that 120 now and 35 after the win on Friday against the Iowa Hawkeyes. The starting lineups for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Led by their junior setter, Kelly Hunter. The Rolfson twins in the starting lineup. The sophomore, Michaela Fecky and Brianna Holman, the transfer from LSU, will patrol the middle for the Huskers. Head coach John Cook in his 17th season overall. You see his sparkling record at 485 and 63, three national titles to go with that record, including the defending national champs. So we have the defending national champs, Audrey, a team that came in here to Lincoln last year and knocked off the Huskers on a very disappointing weekend back then. Nebraska has already avenged one of those, looking to do it again tonight. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, the crowd is here to cheer their Huskers on. What a great venue this is for women's volleyball. None other like it in the nation. So a great atmosphere here in Lincoln, 8,200 plus in another sellout, including the standing room only at the top of the Arena, Kelly Hunter will start it off for Nebraska with the serve. Swinson will run the slide right away, and Nebraska's block is there. Fecky shuts it down. You look at the series between these two teams all time. Nebraska leads it over the Golden Gophers 32-6. Last meeting, the Gophers won it. It was about a year ago right here in Lincoln. They'll run it again to tap. Dug in the back row by Albright. Point for the Gophers. Nebraska called for the back row attack. Well, so far from Minnesota, we're seeing two slide attacks, attempts, and one was clean, and the other one got blocked by Fecky, first point of the game. And in order for Samantha Selinger Swenson to be able to set that slide, the pass has got to be there. So we'll see what Minnesota's serve pass game is like this afternoon. Hunter pushes outside to Rolfson, who goes line and got the kill. Well, Rolfson just hitting a nice line shot that time. One of the things Minnesota Gophers coach said to me was he really wants his team to play better backcourt defense. That time, a line shot really needed to be dug by the right back defensive player for Minnesota. Here's Michaela Fecky, the sophomore out of West Point, Iowa. Always a tough server. Real quick to Wilhite, can't get it down. Nebraska keeps it alive, free ball, heading back for the Gophers. And there's that middle attack, and a Loman. Yeah, when you set a, send a free ball over to the other side, you are going to be in system. You can see how the middle attacker there, Loman, is up and ready. She's against one blocker, lots of angles to hit the ball at. She hits it beautifully. Middles for the Gophers hitting at a high clip this year, Loman's right around 360. Hannah Tap at 364. And an ace for Sarah Wilhite. Well, I have a feeling Kenzie Maloney for Nebraska is going to be very busy in serve receive. Ball is going to go to her a lot. We'll see if they're able to pick her apart on serve receive. Right back to her again. Rolfson tried it across, blocked back. They'll go right back to Amber. Other side, the attack by the freshman. Didn't quite get on top of it. Alexis Hart is wide. Well, Minnesota was in a situation they wanted to be in. They wanted to transition, get a dig, attack, go from dig to attack. That time, the attacking error gives a point to Nebraska. Here's Justine wong Arantes. The top of the barrows in the conference. And good save by wong Arantes. Nebraska runs the quick middle and found the kill by Amber Rolfson. Well, Justine Wong Arantes for Nebraska, keeping the ball alive twice in that rally. Look at this sprawling save from Wong Arantes and then a quick attack. It's nicely done by Nebraska. Slide the block by Amber. 
And Rolfson again, back to back by Amber Rolfson. Second one finds the floor. Well, what's impressive about her blocking ability is even if she's not quite there with her feet, she doesn't give up on the play. She gets up and seals an area of the court. It's a big point and a momentum changer for Nebraska. 5-3 here early on in Lincoln. Out of the back row, the swing by Will Height, and Will Height effective from all over the floor. They'll feed her out of that, beyond that 10-foot line frequently. Yeah, and what I like about her is she is a very calm and composed type of a hitter. She wants the ball in tight situations, and I have a feeling <laughs> this whole match is going to be filled with tight situations, so she'll be very busy offensively, but as we said in the open, it'll be interesting to see what she can do in the blocking game as well. Rolfson again with the kill. Amber had a terrific night on Friday and she's starting off quickly here. Well, she certainly is and it's all because the pass is right there. Look at how Hunter is able to set a tightly passed ball. Blocker on the other side goes up with her, opens things up for the attacker. Outside Hart, wow, what an athletic swing by the freshman from Minnesota, Alexis Hart. Yeah, I've been looking forward to watching this young play, young lady play all afternoon. She is a force to be reckoned with, very talented, leaps well high above the blocker. That time you see a nice sharp angle attack. Big 10 freshman of the week three times this year is Alexis Hart. Nina Cutchin says not only is she extremely athletic, but takes to coaching so quickly it has really adapted fast within the confines of what they're trying to do offensively. Yeah, well, when you can get a gifted athlete like her and that is also coachable, right. boy, that's a gem, isn't it? Because sometimes these kids come in and they're these gifted athletes and they, they don't think they need to learn anything, but not Alexis Hart. She has come in and really done a great job for Minnesota. Tip try there, not there for tap. Down the line, right on the line for Michaela Fecky. Becky swinging so well already in this first set, but look at the set there by Kelly Hunter, putting her outside hitter in a perfect position to swing over top of Samantha Selinger Swenson, the right side blocker for Minnesota. The kill by Becky leads to the timeout from Hugh McCutcheon. We'll be back in Lincoln. Husker's up by three. You have to have your core defense, your core offense, I mean, the things that you're really good at, and those things have got to be your foundation, and then you just got to tweak it a little bit depending on who you're playing. Because, they, because you don't, I mean, we don't have all week to prepare for Minnesota, so, uh, you, or one match. You know, we got to prepare for two teams. So we, you got to go back to a lot of what our core foundation and beliefs are and, and our philosophy on how we play volleyball, and we got to try to do that better in both these teams. John Cook commenting on the back-to-back -back matches Nebraska faced this weekend against number four Wisconsin and now number three Minnesota. Not easy to make that turn. Right, and I like what he says about believing in your system, taking care of the ball when it's on your side of the net, and then tweaking what you do a little bit to match up well with the opponent. A swing and a kill. Once again, Amber Rolfson, she is now four for four, and Amber with 20 kills already this weekend. Yeah, and six kills, zero errors for Nebraska. They are hitting incredibly. They're in system and doing what they want offensively. Another tough serve, pulls Seliger Swinson off the net. Hunter pushes outside. Fecky rolls it between the block. Good pace shot by Michaela Fecky. Yeah, a real mature type of swing from Michaela Fecky. Taken a little bit off, as you said, and finding the hole, placing the shot nicely. Minnesota took that 3-2 lead since then. Nebraska on an 8-2 run. Make it 8-3 now run as the Huskers up by four after the service error. So back to serve now is Alexis Hart. She's a 6-3 freshman middle out of Independence, Missouri, Truman High School. And the service error. As talented and as coachable as you are, sometimes environments and early, it takes a while to settle down. Right, and you know, I've watched her serve. She's got an aggressive serve. She was trying to go low over top of the net, put some pressure on Nebraska, because if you don't, look at what Nebraska is doing offensively. So she took a risk. The gamble did not pay off. Here's Sydney Townsend to serve for Nebraska. Well, on the quick, just rolled over there by Paige Tapp. Try a deep corner, and that one is long. A nice move by Kelly Hunter, though, to try to keep the offense going in a different look there. Trying to tip it deep to the right back corner, just long. 
So here's Paige Tapp to serve. Paige, of course, the twin sister of Hannah Tapp, both out of Stewartville, Minnesota, Stewartville High School. Been staples in this program for four years for Hugh McCutcheon. Blocked by Nebraska. Bree Holman along with Kelly Hunter there. Now line, good swing. Fecky tries it. Tapp had a hand on it in the back row, and Fecky gets the kill. Well, what you're seeing are the components to a really good team. Great defensive get by Nebraska on a tough attack. There you see the Libero bump setting over her head perfectly to that left pin. Those are all the components to a championship team. So often these matches are decided by who can be effective out of system because you're going to find yourself out of system when you're facing the kind of swings that you'll constantly get in here in Nebraska out of system again. And there you go. Push to the deep corner by Holman and gets the point. Well, that's typically not a shot that would score. <laughs> Teams spend a lot of time working on the second contact. Here you see a little scramble play, a little communication error. Really, Justine Wongaranta should not look at anybody else. No hesitation. She should always want to take that second ball. They got lucky on that one. So is that a recognition by Holman in the moment, or is that film study that helps you out? <laughs> I think that's just putting it deep to the corner and wishing for the best. That's right. Good pass. Nebraska can run the quick. And Holman puts it down. Nebraska's middles this weekend have been on point. Yes, they have. Here is the All-American, Brianna Holman. Take a look at this fantastic save on backcourt defense for Nebraska. And then a great transition. Look at that. All Nebraska. Set one goes to them. Huskers out to their early lead in this one, 14-7 on top of Minnesota. It's been kind of a carousel at the top of the uh, rankings, the national rankings over the last four weeks. Of course, Nebraska spent the first six weeks of the season at number one, the Nebraska line in the white. After Nebraska's loss to Ohio State, they dropped to third, back to second, and then regained the number one spot. And you look at both Minnesota and Wisconsin, they also have spent time at number one. Yeah, I call it the curse of the number one <laughs> national <laughs> ranking. You know, perhaps these teams feeling a bit of pressure once they get to that number one spot. But here in the Big Ten, you are going to face these top-ranked opponents. So whether you're one, two, three, four, whatever it is, it's going to be a tough match as we're seeing here in the first set. And of course, the only Big Ten team that hasn't been number one is the team that was until last night at the top of the standings in Penn State. And of course, Penn State upset last evening by Michigan. Fourteen eight here. Hugh McCutcheon's timeout, able to slow that Husker roll. <laughs> Becky with the swing, Seliger Swinson with a nice dig. It'll be free balled over for Nebraska. Now run the quick, Holman, swing wide. 3-0 run here by the Gophers. So we call that set, it's still an A, but it's a little bit of a push. So Holman started a little bit more to the right, tried to get that angle, was really going for that right back shot and just went slightly wide with it. A little push set from the center. Holman again, got hand on it. Holman will take it on the first touch. Wilhite finds the angle. Nice swing by Sarah Wilhite. And what you look for on defense is how the backcourt defense works around a well-placed block and that time that sharp cross-court shot right on the sideline was too much for Nebraska's defense to handle. Well, the timeout worked for McCutcheon. Cook will try the same. Oscar's up by four. Nebraska, of course, the defending national champs, four-time national champions, dating back to their first in 2000, won it in 2006, 2015, and, of course, Terry Pettit won it in 1995. So out of the timeout, Nebraska goes to Fecky. Great up by Libero in the back row, Rosado, Daliana Lee's Rosado. And that roll continues, a 4-0 run here for the Gophers. Well, if you can get a few points just off of coverage on your side of the net, that's a good feeling. So that time, Minnesota doing a good job of just sticking with the play, winning the point. Good service run here by Seliger Swinson. Nice kill on the left side. Rolfson with the angle. On that particular service pattern, Katie Rolfson will swing left side. She did a good job passing. 
Wasn't a perfect pass, but got outside after the pass. I like the feet, the speed to get in position to get a strong, aggressive approach. Tough serve by Fecky. Right back to the outside to Wilhite. Nice coverage there by Gaynor. Tip try, Rolson got it down. That's Katie with another kill. Let's take a look at this great coverage, keeping the ball alive on Minnesota's side of the net. And then look at that finesse shot. Finger spread, hand under the ball, little tip. And if you're a defensive player, as soon as you see that elbow drop from the hitter, you just want to take off, take those three or four steps, and don't worry about the deep tip, because there's somebody in middle back that'll play the deep tip. Great pass there from Will Height in system and terminated by Molly Lohman, her second kill. We talk about Molly Lohman and what an improvement she has made, really elevating her game. She gained a lot of confidence after her experience with the collegiate national team this summer, really did a good job for them and has come into this uh, season playing really, really well. She really talked about a lot of the changes that she's made in her game. And Finally, this year, starting to see all of those changes pay off, and she's had a terrific year. Malloy with the kill there. Let's take a look at serve receive. A little shuffle step to the ball. Nice push right over top of the block is Malloy. First kill by Andy Malloy, the transfer from Baylor. Malloy started out in the Big 12 at Iowa State, spent a year there, then transferred to Baylor. And then Malloy, after graduating from Baylor, as a graduate student now, one year to play, transferred to Nebraska. What an addition both she and Brianna Holman have been as transfers into this Nebraska program. And there's Loman again. Yeah, one of my favorite setters in the Big Ten is Samantha Selinger Swenson. I like what she does. You see her there on the 10 foot line, dishing the ball to the middle attacker there on the 31. So Selinger Swenson, just a great read on the block and she's fearless. She's able to set middle even when she's off the net. Chased down by Hart. Nice job to keep it alive. Set back and a tip try again, and once again, Katie Rolfson with the tip kill. Rolfson twins right now, eight kills, no errors, 12 swings. Yeah, they're doing such a great job. And take a look, again, look at the defense. It's a perimeter defense, so that area right over top of the block is really susceptible. And it's either gonna be that drop off blocker on the right side or the left back player. It's their responsibility to get the ball. Good block there by Rolfson, and Hart with the tip. And Hart goes just over the block and lands it in the open area. You know, we all love those thunderous hits, but often it's those roll shots and tips that are scoring. You're back on defense, ready to play. And if you can disguise it, you know, and at the last minute, drop your elbow, nice little roll shot over the block. Oftentimes it'll score if you're not playing a rotation defense under the block. Nebraska hitting 429 here in set number one. The Illini hitting under 200. Great up there by Daliana Lease. Rosado, and led to the point. Well, I like the maturity that I'm seeing from Alexis Hart. Even though she's just a freshman, she's taking a bit off of her swing, placing it in perfect spot to exploit Nebraska's defense. And the block, Seliger Swenson comes up big with the block. And you can see these wild momentum shifts within a set here. Take a look at blocking there by Minnesota and then the support. <laughs> I love the cheers that are going on on the, on the bench. They're a lot of fun to watch. First block of the match there for the Gophers on the slide. Good tip by Hart. Nebraska into the net. Point for the Gophers and they're within one. Four zip Minnesota run. Nebraska jumped out to the early lead, but Minnesota has come back to cut it to one here in Lincoln. Time for the State Farm State of Success and look at Nebraska's record since this weekend last year. It was Wisconsin and Minnesota in here on the same weekend, both knocked off Nebraska. And since that weekend, Nebraska is 33 and one. The only loss coming this year to Ohio State, obviously last year went on to win the national title. Yeah, and you know what Coach Cook said, that was really a turning point for Nebraska. 
And this is what I love about good coaches. They can turn a negative into a positive. He reset their focus, told them never to give up, and they kept pushing. And as a result, national championship. He's fairly blunt about it in our conversation with him earlier this week. He said, you know, we were knocked out. You, you go back-to-back -back losses at home. It doesn't happen often to a, to a Nebraska team, especially here at home. He said we were flat out knocked out. How were we going to respond? And you're right, Audrey. The response was terrific. Yeah, and I love the fact that he was real and he was able to regroup his troop and then they went on to have a great season. Nebraska misconnects. Gophers have tied it at 18. There's Katie Shaw with the serve. In system. Becky off the block. Check that. That's Malloy, Andy Malloy with her second kill. Well, the tempo set to the pin is pretty low and fast, and it catches Minnesota's block reaching to the pin. And they desperately needed that point. Andy Malloy delivering for her team. Albright in the serve for Nebraska. And a quick serve as a nice side out by the Gophers in system. I love the arm swing of this young lady. Alexis Hart on the left pin for Minnesota. Comes all the way through to such a high contact point and a great snap on the ball. Service error makes it 2019. Just keep an eye to see if Huma Kutchin keeps her on the service line when they rotate around and they may not obviously get to her serving in this set, but we'll keep an eye on whether she is uh, getting the nod to serve in the next set. Townsend serve just over the net. Seliger Swenson pushes it outside. Will Height will bump it across. Good pancake up. Off the block and wow, what a defensive save led to the point. Yeah, Nebraska getting lucky on that one. You shouldn't have to sprawl to save a free ball that's coming over the net. So communication errors right now. Just being a little hesitant on defense, but it paid off okay for Nebraska. They ended up getting that point. Great job to keep that alive. Quick reaction by Paige Tapp. The slide, Holman wide. No touch. Back in now for the Gophers is Taylor Morgan. First time we've seen Morgan, the sophomore middle from Blaine, Minnesota, into the match. She'll come into the middle. <laughs> Timely dump by Kelly Hunter. You know, she has been quiet for this first set, not attacking very much. We saw her attack one deep that went long. But this time she gets a feel for where the block is. Little space between her. You can see Minnesota's block not jumping with her, jumping after. You don't want to do that. You want to go up with the setter when she is attacking the ball. Roger Swinson tried to return the favor. Blocked back and a good block by Wilhite. And so a lazy attack there results in an easy point for Minnesota. If they're not completely in rhythm, you want to place the ball somewhere, so you just don't want to go low over top of the net. The block is just there waiting. This has a very similar feel to last year's match between these two. All three games that Minnesota won were decided by two points or less. Nebraska took an early lead last year. Minnesota came from behind. Gophers with a big block there to tie it at 22. Yeah, I like the closing speed here by number 13 for Minnesota. Look at Molly Lohman on the block there, getting hip to hip with the outside blocker. No space to hit between that block. Rolfson goes down the line. Seliger Swinson is there. Bump set back to Will Height. Good up by Wong Orantes. The tip driver sent back over by Tap. And off the top of the block of Tap, and Rosada pulls that out of the net. Right into the middle of the roll. And the Gophers take the lead for the first time here in set number one. First kill for one of the Tap sisters. John Cook off the bench, talking to his players. 
On defense, you want parallel lines. You want two people going for the ball. You don't want to turn and look to see if somebody else is playing the ball. Just Gop go for it. Gophers did have the lead at 3-2, so second lead here for Minnesota. Big kill by Nebraska, back to even at 23. Kind of match we expected, first set's indicative. Yeah, going back and forth, and this is exactly what you expect of number one and number three going at it. Great volleyball we're seeing on both sides of the net. Both of these teams last year in the Final Four. Hugh McCutcheon, of course, was named the AVCA Coach of the Year last year, leading these Gophers to that Final Four. Big swing from the left side. They go to their star, Will Height. She averages better than four kills per set to lead the conference. Well, let's take a look at Will Height. Big aggressive swing here. And there you see the bench loving every minute of it. <laughs> Will Height now to serve for set number one. swing point Nebraska even at 24. We talk about out of system swings you saw it right there a poor second contact traps the outside hitter when you're in that situation you have to do something positive with the ball off the hands tip roll shot but not into the belly of the block. Bump set outside swing well long by Malloy. Set point number two here for the Gophers. This will be interesting to see Nebraska's mental fortitude here in the early stages of this match. What they can do here in serve receive will be key. Valiano leaves Rosado now to serve. Line wide point Minnesota. Set Minnesota. Golden Gophers snap Nebraska's 11 set winning streak versus top five opponents. Big set number one for the Gophers. Minnesota takes set number one, 26-24 in Lincoln. Oh yeah, here are the Gopher fans enjoying set number one, why not? And by the way, Minnesota fans, you're 14 and 0 when you win set number one. Ah, you like to hear that. Yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> well, Hugh McCutcheon does such a good job of preparing his team, and they are not easily intimidated. They really did a great job of turning that first set around. It was all Nebraska. Hitting percentage for Minnesota was not good in the first half of that set. And then you thought it was going to be all Nebraska, and then that crazy momentum change. About 18, 17 for Nebraska. Then it was a nice four run, point run by Minnesota. One by two. This young lady at the service line, too, Celebrate Swenson, really got that going for Minnesota when they were struggling. She went back to the service line and really started that rally for the Gophers. Here's a look at the numbers from set number one. Yeah, we take a look at hitting percentage, and I'm telling you, Minnesota really turned it around. They were not swinging very well. I was a little worried about their offense, but boy, they were able to turn things around and as a result win that first set. When Hugh McCutcheon took that timeout at 14-7, I believe Minnesota was hitting zero. Mm -hmm. So to come back and not only win set number one, but to hit at a clip of you know 250 plus, bettering Nebraska, which was hitting at a 400 plus clip at the time, a turn of events for the Gophers. Yeah, and that's where you have to be mentally strong as an athlete. Just because you're not playing well in a certain portion of the match or a portion of the set, you've got to be able to forget about it and go on to the next play. Good hand on the block there. Swenson on the slide to tap and tap, put it down. Hand a tap with the kill. Second kill for Hannah Tap. And it's a great set there setting the slide when you're off the net really is an unexpected set so it puts your hitter in a very good position to score. Holman block back coverage provided by Maloney down the line goes Rolfson not there Rosada with good good dig. Deep corner not open. Looks 
expect to see a few of these long rallies here. Two great defensive teams, and that one won by the Gophers on the kill from Loman. And I like Minnesota's decision not to block this ball. The middle blocker, outside blocker communicating. They came off the net, put themselves in a good transition position to score. And it was number 13 there, Molly Loman, with a nice kill. Coverage by Wong Arantis on the good block. Then Malloy tries the tip, it's not there. Bump set outside. Tap little shots it. She's blocked by it. Right up by Rosado. And the Husker block. Brianna Holman got a hand on it. Well, Holman does a really good job of being steady in her base position, waiting for the ball to be set, not expecting that it's going to get pushed to the outside. She knows what the setter for Minnesota can do, so she just respects that and holds her spot in the middle of the court, blocks a nice quick attack. Holman led the Huskers with six blocks on Friday night against Wisconsin. She also added seven kills to that. Swinson tried to push it out to the pin, didn't quite get it there. And we're even at three. Sometimes when you're risky, hey, it doesn't always pay off, but that's okay. It's early here in the second set. It was a risky set by Samantha Selinger Swenson, but did not pay off. You saw a picture there of the twins from Nebraska, the Rolfson twins. Of course, Minnesota has its set of twins in the taps. It's, it's, these two teams very familiar. I mean, in the way they're composed. In-state recruiting, Minnesota with Minnesota kids. They have twins who are terrific and, you know, contribute at a high level. Nebraska the same. Rolfson twins in-state. Mostly Nebraska recruits. Terrific experience. Minnesota with six seniors on the team. Four who contribute on a regular basis. Nebraska with also four seniors who all contribute. And you talk about in-state recruiting, how important is that to have feeder programs in your state? And these kids, they dream about playing for their, their state schools. So um, it's so much easier when you've got that kind of a program and you've got feeder programs that are playing at the top level in club. Touch call, Malloy gets the kill. Nice jump set to speed up the tempo of the attack. And then you can see she's actually going for that shot. You can see her hand after the point of contact going across her body. So that was definitely a planned shot. Wow. <laughs> Great pass by Hart. Gets back in position to attack and pounds it. Very impressive looking young player as <laughs> Huma Kutchin gives the nod of the head to that. Right, right. And, you know, his interaction with her at practice was really pretty neat. He was really encouraging her every time she swung big at the ball and you can appreciate what she brings to the court for his team. It's a go for offense that has so many weapons is the kill on the outside from Malloy again. The only team to hit above 300 against Wisconsin this year was Minnesota in that win. They hit 329. You have that many weapons, it's just hard to know, you know and Seliger Swinson can distribute extremely well. Joust at the net. Becky tries the tip. One, two. And the lift called. And so Fecky does a good job of just placing that ball right over top of the block. And so sometimes there's that, you know, unknown. Is the blocker going to turn around and play the ball? Is the backcourt defense going to play that tip? So again, communication is so important in this game. Albright's serve into the net, the service error. So now Hart back to serve and answering your question here, Audrey. She does get the nod. She <laughs> he trusts her. And the serve just long. First two were into the net, third one long. So Alyssa Gaynor back in for the Gophers, in to serve for Nebraska. Come Sydney Townsend, there's a look at Hugh McCutcheon. And Hugh McCutcheon saying, I like what you're doing in the front court, kid, but let's get that serve in, please. <laughs> Overpass, Holman 
with the kill. Nice job by Seliger Swenson to recognize that, get up on the block, but. Yeah, nice quick athletic yep. move by her, and it goes off the blocker's hands. And then at that point, it's all about calling the ball and then recalling it when there's confusion between two players. Somebody has to be really vocal. It's okay to call the ball two, three times. Tough serve. Free ball for the Huskers. One on one down the line, and Fecky wins that most times. Yeah, and Fecky just is out, Matt matching right now she's at 6-3 watch him watch this block kind of a smaller block there with Selinger Swenson Becky celebrating Huma McCutcheon looking a little concerned and you like that Hunter had on the slide Holman but saw the one on one on the outside and kicked it all the way out Huskers on top by four here in Lincoln you have the app, right? I do. I love it. <laughs> Customizable feature, so nice. Go we'll check that out if you don't have it. Off the top of the block there, Nebraska on top, 10-6, and that makes it a 6-1 Nebraska run. This match was the set was tied at five. You know, and it just looks so much like the first set. Take a look at the dig here. Great movement by Fecky on the outside. She sees that open spot, but the first set. We talked about Nebraska's hitting percentage here in the second set. They've got eight kills, zero errors, hitting about 39%. So if they can maintain that sort of uh, composure from their attacking standpoint, then boy, this one looks like it could go Nebraska's way. But just when you think that's going to happen, Minnesota showing the fight. Will Height with another kill. Set it off the top. She's led the Gophers this year in kills 13 of their 19 matches. She had 22 kills on 52 swings at Iowa on Friday night. Season high 23 against a now top five ranked San Diego team. Love it when your big players step up in those big matches. Big block. Brianna Holman. Yeah, so it's okay to do a roll shot, but again, it has to go up over top of a very high block. There you can see how it's a roll shot that goes low over the tape and that block is just gonna eat that ball up. Hunter Power, and now serving is Kelly Hunter. Off the block, great up by Rosado to keep it alive. Outside. Yeah, look out below, Michaela <laughs> Fecky just delivered. Uh, Rosado though, we've got to mention that yeah. dig, it was fantastic. Look at how she went and got the ball. But look at this attack here. Right there between the two defensive players. And one player pulling away from the ball. You definitely don't want to do that. You want to go toward the ball. We talk about parallel lines. Somebody's got short, someone's got deep. You just have to be aggressive and courageous with the velocity of that swing. You've got to have the courage to go for it. Rosado certainly showed the courage on that diving save to keep the point alive. Holman just found an open area. So it's really hard to dig against that middle attack because they do have the option of going straight down with it. And so sometimes if you place the ball more perimeter, you catch that left back player coming in sharp. So Holman just showing her experience there as a middle attacker, doing a good job for Nebraska. We talked about the similar feel between this set and set number one. It was. 14-8 in set number one as well, and Nebraska now up 15-8 after the block. Whitey finding herself one-on-one -on -one and really should have dropped the thumb and gone more sharp cross-court with that ball. Rolfson will take it. Rolf Rolfson with three blocks, Holman with four, Nebraska with six in the match, and boy, what a terrific crowd here in Lincoln on their feet, ready for this battle of top five. Both of these teams really do such a great job with attendance. As we see throughout the Big Ten Conference, Nebraska obviously has led the nation now the last four years, including this year since they've moved in to the new venue here, an average attendance of over 8,100. 
Wisconsin is third in the country at just about 6,000. Minnesota, though, also in the top four with 4,100 plus. They're used to playing in these big arenas in front of big crowds. And if you're an outstanding high school volleyball player, why would you not want to play in one of these venues? You're absolutely right. You know, I, I look at some of the uh, kids and they just have these big eyes as they're looking around and they're seeing what the possibility could be could be for them coming here to play for Nebraska is every kid's dream in the state of Nebraska, that's for sure. You know, John Cook had some goals when he came in here 16 years ago, and one of them was he wanted to consistently sell out whole, all the home matches. Well, let's check that box off. He's done a great job, and the fans he has here are loyal, knowledgeable, they're invested. They love John Cook, and they love this Nebraska team. This, by the way, the 215th consecutive regular season sellout for Nebraska volleyball. And you look around here, 80, you know, 8,000 seats, and it's a facility that was built specifically for volleyball. So many times we see facilities that have, you know, uh, used for other purposes, but this is really a volleyball-specific facility, and to have that kind of stretch of 200-plus consecutive sellouts is remarkable. Quick in the middle, and the kill by Molly Lohman, and each time out of the timeout, Hugh McCutcheon has drawn up a nice play to get the Gophers back on the board. Right, and what's crucial is you've got to be able to control that pass. So Molly Lohman comes in as the middle, and she does a good job of making herself available, finding herself one-on-one -on -one against the block, getting that important point for her team. Outside, the roll shot by Malloy, not there. Rosado with the bump set outside, Hart. Sent it over. Rolfson off the top of the block. Hart again. And Hart with the kill. Alexis Hart now with seven kills. When you talk about the tempo of the attack, Alexis Hart takes her first step as the setter is releasing the ball. So she's essentially up in the air early. And she takes a nice big swing at the ball. I like that tempo set to the pin. Holman down, back line, great shot by Brianna Holman. Holman in that service pattern will swing right side and she does a really good job of hitting perimeter of the court. Let's take a look at it again. Nice shot by her. Tough serve by Wong Arantes. Hart punches it over. Hunter behind her. Into the antenna. A miscommunication there from Hunter and Rolfson. Yeah, Cook saying, what's the call? Saying the ball went outside the antenna or touched, touched the, the antenna. Touched the antenna, yeah. <laughs> you see the coaches say it didn't. Rosado will serve now for the Gophers. Gophers 16 and three on the year. Eight and one in the conference. Overpass and down. Well, we often point out when the serve receive, the DS doesn't do a good job. Kenzie Malloy putting up a perfect pass right there. Look at her platform angled to the target. And then a nice heads up play there by Rolfson to win the point. Back in now for the Gophers. Katie Shaw to serve, the senior defensive specialist out of Richland, Michigan. On the slide, high hands found him. Well, Minnesota was going for zone three on that serve, trying to serve short, trying to get the middle out of the offense. Did not work that time, that gamble did not pay off. You can see just a little touch there off the blocker's hands results in a point for Nebraska. Albright with a tough serve. Good job to stay in system there. Nice save by Juan Arantes. But the kill goes to the Gophers. Well, back and forth action here. Minnesota showing that they don't care about the score at this point. <laughs> They're playing one ball at a time and going to try to chip their way back into this second set. Eighteen thirteen, Gophers 
Remember, down by six in the first as well, and came back to win that one. That goes off the block and out. You really sometimes mirror your coach's <laughs> actions, and Hugh McCutcheon just so cool over there on the yeah. pitch. And also, he's probably seen it all. Oh, I'm right. sure he has, yeah. And, you know, the matchup that I'm particularly interested in is this Will Height block against Rolfson's attack. And it's been a back and forth battle, a little game within the game here that's been so fun to watch. Will High wins at that time. Aggressive, fearless type of kid. Let's take a look at her calling for the set. Last two steps to the ball, swinging big. That's a crucial point for her team. She's really upped her game as well in this her senior season. Made the all regional team last year. Obviously Big Ten Player of the Week earlier this year. First team All-American in high school. And again, Will Height. John Cook will take a timeout. <laughs> Confirming he has two left, so right. he'll take one. A well, good time to call a timeout here. Minnesota creeping their way back into this one. You got Will Height in the front row. You got to figure out how you're going to defend her. And at this point, you want to just focus on serve receive. Make sure you're in system. And I love how focused the assistant coaches are. And you know, they always come up with a game plan. They've got all kinds of stats that they use um, from the bench to inform the players. So you know, this is as much a mental game as it is a physical game. You want to play smart. What I love about this game, too, is it's such a game of emotion, too, and I love the shifts in momentum right. that happen. Well, our doubleheader of volleyball action continues next with Indiana and Northwestern. Coverage starts right after our match. Presented by Tachikara on BTN and BTN to go. Indiana Northwestern coming your way following this matchup between Nebraska and Minnesota. Let's take a look at Sarah Wilhite, the 6'1 senior outside. Yeah, take a look at her shots there. Sharp cross court. Another one, perimeter. And then we talked about how important her job will be blocking and sealing that pin for Minnesota. And she's done a really good job. So she's working with nine kills right now, hitting 29% on 24 swings. So not bad for Sarah Wilhite. So 19-15, and it was about this point in set number one where Minnesota really began to flex its muscle late. Came from behind, tied it up at 22, went on to win set number one. John Cook takes that last time out. Gophers one set one, 26-24. Huskers by four. Zeki goes down the line. Good dig by Shaw. Back row, Albright right at Shaw again. Another good up. Three ball over. Nice coverage on the dump. is down. Michaela Fecky, Fecky's 10th kill. Well, the crowd appreciates the effort on both sides of the net, but Nebraska, what a smart play by Fecky here to end the rally, a little tip over top of the block, and you can see you know, Minnesota did a great job of digging those hard hits. They were playing perimeter down low and ready at the point of attack, but they could not read that tip by Fecky. Third time in 10 Big Ten matches that Fecky has reached double-digit kills. And Wilhite has become accustomed to that. Her 10th kill right there, and she has at least 10 kills in 17 of Minnesota's 19 matches. She's been dominant. An incredible skill set that young lady has. Here they're communicating about blocking and digging. They're going to take a look at who is in the front row for Nebraska and how they're going to defend. Big block by the Gophers. Tap was there along with Loman. A lot of sets are going to the left side <laughs> pin right now. But remember, you got Fecky in this serve-receive pattern for Nebraska on the right side. 
We've got Wolfson on the left, so we'll see where Hunter goes with this ball. And a block. So Fecky's block goes off of the block and out. So kill for Fecky. That's 11 now. Just wide. Yeah, you've always got to pay attention to where Fecky is. Even though you've got Rolfson on the left pin, with Fecky there, she is really effective from both pins. So you've got to be disciplined, line up against her swing. Fecky had seven kills, hit 467 on Friday against Wisconsin. Bettering those numbers already here this afternoon. Off the block, good up. Seliger Swinson kept it alive. Rosado provides the free ball. Holman pounds through the block off the side and Holman with the kill. Well, there's just no answer for that. <laughs> Listen to this crowd. They are loving it. In system, nice quick tempo. You're going to see that there is a gap between the blockers there. Tough to know what to do as a middle. You want to chase after that ball. The problem is, is the tempo is so quick. Even when you're chasing, you're going to be late. On the slide to tap. Solo blocked there by Malloy. Other way, Wilhite. She's blocked and sent back. Wilhite will get another swing at it. Holman with the tip. And another kill. Back-to-back -back kills for Holman, who has eight. And Nebraska in this set hitting above 370. And Holman being a workhorse in the front row, getting her hands on a lot of balls, blocking, and then transitioning very quickly, making herself available as a swinger. Off the block and out that time. Good swing by Molly Lohman. So that's an example of being high on the block as opposed to low and over on the block. When you're high, it becomes a target for the hitter to hit. It's exactly what Lohman does for Nebraska, getting a big point. Lohman has a season high of 10 kills twice this year, once against Penn State, and then Friday night against Iowa. She also had 10 already with six here as we near the end of set number two. Nebraska on top 24-18. Fans on their feet here in Lincoln for set point in set number two. blocker to slow the ball down you want to get stuff blocks but if you can't getting a controlled touch on the ball in the front court is super important super good slows that ball down makes it easy for that backcourt defense to play the ball so nicely done by Nebraska so here in the third Kelly Hunter will start it off for Nebraska Zolger pushes outside the swing by Will Height and Will Height terminates yeah, Will Hyde, hard to stop that ball that goes deep in the left back corner. Really not a player on the court that can dig that ball. That really is a ball that you hope gets blocked. Holman with the tip and got it down. About all she had was the tip, but found a good place for it. That's right. So when the right side blocker comes in to help block the ball, it opens up space on that side of the court. You want to make sure you're tipping really close to the sideline and really tight to the net to put some pressure on that right back defensive player. So Michaela Fecky now will serve for Nebraska. Attacks Will Height, but they'll go right back to her after the pass, and Will Height with her second, nope, check that. Must have ripped the antenna just before the block. Point Nebraska. And you see it's a strategy a lot of teams use. You want to serve that left side attacker. She's back in left back. Sarah Wilhite on serve receive, so the ball will go to her, try to wear her down. Rosado forced to bump set. Now Seliger Swinson will send it out to Wilhite with the roll. Free ball for the Gophers. They'll go quick here and terminate. Good kill by Lohman. Yeah, Minnesota's going to take advantage of any free ball. They're in system. Lohman so effective here today. Gets up quick, one on one. She's long, she's lanky, she's really quick twitch. Nice attack by her in the middle. 
How important when you're out of system and really scrambling to get back is it important to continue to do that, especially in these long rallies? Well, yeah, you don't want to send free balls over the net. So if you can, you want to be smart. If you're going to send a free ball, put it in a place where it's going to be taxing to the defense. So oftentimes we'll see the free ball going to the setter if she's playing back court or deep to the corners. Another block here, solo block by Holman. That's five already in the match for Brianna Holman. Outside, the tip try, and Hart gets the kill. Minnesota doing a really nice job here. They've kind of silenced the crowd. Lots of tips you're seeing because you're, you know that these hitters are primarily powerful hitters, so defense is on their heels, and we're seeing a lot of tips going right over top of the block. We'll see if defensive systems will change. You can rotate behind the block if you're a wing digger, but so far everyone's playing perimeter. Hart right, with the tip again. Out of the back wheel, rolled over, and Will Height with a nice touch kill. Again, a roll shot that scores. <laughs> on defense, you just want to go after the ball. Don't look at anyone else. Nicely disguised here. I want to take two to three steps before you extend and roll. So try to stay on your feet and run those balls down. <laughs> Off the block goes Malloy. Back row will hide again. Set outside Andy Malloy. Put a hand on it there by Rolfson to keep that alive. And then luck of the tape, and Katie Rolfson gets a kill. Well, on both sides of the net, you saw some great touches off the block to slow the ball down. A triple block here by Minnesota. And that ball, like you said, just goes trickling on that tape, and it's hard as it deflects at the point of contact for the court for Minnesota to play it up. Service error there for Nebraska. That is their sixth service error of the match to Minnesota's three. Gophers have one ace, Nebraska none. And back to serve now for the Gophers is Katie Shaw. The slide, and that's put down Amber with another kill. Now that's a beautiful play right there. Let's take a look at this pass right on the money. Quick, quick behind. And if you are a blocker, you've got to be loaded with your knees and, and you have to make the decision, am I going to commit on that attack and just be up waiting for it? Maybe you give up blocking to the left pin. And just with that one by Rolfson. And what a match Amber Rolfson is having. She has nine kills on 13 swings, no errors, and that is her 10th kill. Yeah, she's having a special kind of weekend, yeah. and, uh, you know, and she just keeps trucking along and uh, playing hard and playing with a lot of passion, which is great to see. Put together one of those Big Ten Player of the Week kind of uh, I think so. Kind of weekends. Yeah. She has 10 kills in Nebraska out of system. That'll bring them to their feet here in Lincoln. Well, you can appreciate just the hard work on Nebraska's side of the net. Take a look at this play here. Great defensive get. A couple from Justine. And was, it results in a point. That was actually in system. Yep, yep. <laughs> From behind the 10 foot line into the net by Katie. When you talk about Justine Longarantes as the wow. Libero for Nebraska. She just has so much courage when she plays. We talk about it. You can't be scared for these balls coming at your head and she just sticks her nose in there and plays so tough and then she's got such a big span that she's able to cover. Rosado with the good pancake. Off the top goes Fecky. Pushed outside. Will Height off the top of the block and Will Height gets the kill. Oh, check that. No touch. Point Nebraska. Yeah, she was going for that flat attack, trying yeah. to go for hands, but uh, did not find hands in front of her. Point goes to Nebraska. We talked about the play of Wong Arantes and her numbers certainly special. First Husker to reach a thousand 
digs faster than anyone else, including Kayla Banworth, who played on Team USA. And she's about to break the record of Kayla Banworth for digs in a career at Nebraska. And of course, Banworth was here this weekend, chatted with Minnesota, or chatted with Wisconsin before the match on Friday, chatted with Nebraska as well. There you see a point scoring attack by Selinger Swenson, setter for Minnesota, doing a good job of seeing that there was court open, space open. <laughs> about tape, huh? Yeah, you get lucky sometimes, too. Tap got the tape and got the roll. <laughs> One more look. That's a tough one. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll leave it at eight. Nice job to keep it alive. Real height with the tip. That's a big swing by Michaela Fecky, who continues to have a nice match. 13 now for Fecky, and she's hitting above 450. Well, nice feet by her, because she was inside the court. See her approach there? It's in the middle of the court, because she was trying to defend the tip there. She points to the defensive player that played that tip up. Great set, well-placed shot by Fecky. Joust at the net, kept alive. See what Nebraska does with the free ball. Walt Narantes had to chase it down. They still run the quick. Brianna Holman with the kill. And Brianna Holman is not disguising where she's hitting the ball. Her left hip perpendicular to that net. She's going for that left back corner. She just hits so high. Lock isn't touching it, and she's hitting that corner, so it's hard for the backcourt defense to make a play on the ball as well. John Cook told us right before the start of this set, he hoped that his middles continued to play the way that they had in sets one and two, and Rolfson and Holman now both with 10 kills in the match. That's the first time since the Michigan match nearly a month ago that Holman has reached double digits in kills. Nice defensive ability there by Kitty Shaw to just keep her foot on the line and right back and let that ball go out of bounds. So good positioning, good discipline by her in the right back defensive position of the court. And Holman with the kill off the block of Loman. It's really hard when those balls get deflected slightly by the middle blocker on your side of the net. As a defensive player, you just got to push off your back foot and try to make a, an attempt at the ball. And oftentimes we see that that reaction time is late because of the deflection off the block. Point for Nebraska. So setters backcourt for Minnesota. Tried to set the ball, it did get blocked. So it is a back row attack. Point goes to Nebraska. Will Hyatt will take that one over. Sometimes when you're out of system, you just make the right shot and it works. And it did for Will Hyatt. Yeah, they're really picking on Will Height and serve receive. And like you said, it was an out of system swing. She just doesn't self implode. She just puts the ball deep in the corner, forcing Michaela Fecky to play the ball. And Fecky was in too shallow. He couldn't play that deep shot by Will Height. Into the net. We saw Justine wong Arantes will now go back to serve for Nebraska. We saw assistant coach Laura Casey there chatting with Hugh McCutcheon. And a kill for the Gophers. They run the quick middle. Oh, Rosado, the Libero for Minnesota, doing a good job of taking up space in the backcourt, calling for the pass early calling mine and then at the point of contact really controlling her arms and putting that ball perfectly up to her center big block in the middle by Loman and now the free ball for the Gophers outside good up by Wong Arantes on the swing from Hart Malloy tries to tip this time good coverage my heart flying across the floor. Hart tried that left-handed tip. Pushed out, Malloy. Seliger Swenson, good rally here. And 
Again on the swing by Alexis Hart. I love the control on both sides of the net to reset the point. Neither hitter was going to go for a kill unless that ball was set perfectly. So it's a good, smart tactic, resetting the point, and then it's all Minnesota's left side with a big kill on a better set. It's really tough sometimes balancing the need to do that, but also wanting to be aggressive in all situations, even when not assisting. Well, you're absolutely right. So it takes maturity. Can I swing and score, or is it better just to put the ball in and rely on my block and defense to help win the point? Katie Rolfson will now serve for the Huskers. And serves long. You never have to wonder what John Cook's thinking, do you? <laughs> you read it right there on his sleeve. You know, I think coaching can be such a wonderful thing, and, and it can also be such a frustrating thing because you, you know what your team is capable of, and then sometimes when they make these silly errors, and there are things that you work on in practice all the time, you just have to bite your lip sometimes and just not say anything. Ready to go here in Lincoln, Nebraska. The student section always involved here at the Bob Devaney Sports Center. The Go Big Red signs out in force today as Nebraska leads it here in the third, 15-13. We're all even at a set apiece. Between two of the top teams in the conference. This will have a long way to say who's, you know, at the top right there with Penn State in the end. Minnesota obviously with two losses in the conference. Nebraska with one. Yeah, Justine Wong, Arontas, Arontas saving that point for Nebraska, digging up Alexis Hart's shot in the cross-court area of the court, saving that point. That point goes to Justine. Tip by Hart. Wong Arontas tried to find short zone two there, but set it a bit wide. Yeah, yeah. So again, you're trying to put some pressure on the defense, a silly error. What I like about her, though, she's confident. She just kind of yeah. Let's it go. Not a big deal. I'm ready for server seat. She's such a terrific all-around player. I think John Cook said she's probably the best all-around volleyball player that Nebraska has. And a lot of that stems from her days on the beach. Yeah. You know, she was the youngest player to ever be named a AAA beach volleyball player at 12 years old one tournament. Yeah, that's California for you. That's you grow right. up on the beach and you learn all kinds of tricks and yeah. shots and really develops your game. Right now, Minnesota playing still that perimeter defense over the left side attacker. And uh, that tip right over the block is real susceptible to score. So they haven't really made an adjustment there defensively. Will Height, no doubter there from the left side. Now when you need a kill, you go to this young lady here. And boy, she delivers. It goes from hand to floor very quickly. She's got great hand to ball contact. Nice snap on the ball. I love the bench for Minnesota. Yeah. They are into it. They are engaged, and that's exactly what you want. Serve from tap on the slide, Holman. Becky kind of flipped it over. Will Height again. Will Height now with 15 kills, and her hitting percentage slowly beginning to ratchet up. She's around 225 now. Good transition swing by her, and the dig was perfect, and so the tempo to her is what she likes, a little faster to that pin. She takes her first step at the setter's contact on the ball. And the block tap was there to put it away. And you can see on the other side of the net, this time Fecky a little bit slower on the approach. Block is there, easily reaching back to the middle of the court. So the Gophers with a nice little run here. They've tied it back up in Lincoln here in set number three, all even at 17 apiece. And the fans for the Gophers certainly here in force among these 8,100 fans here at the Devaney Sports Center. Ah, uh, there you like to see the smiles. All even at 17 apiece. Match tied 1-1 here in the third. Well, here's what's coming up for the Minnesota Golden Gophers in terms of their schedule. They'll be at Rutgers and then that tough one against Penn State next weekend. So that will be another big match inside the conferences. Penn State, which lost last night, suffered its first loss in the conference. 
Uh, we'll take on Minnesota, then Indiana, Maryland, they close it out with them alone. Yeah, and they have been on the road a lot. So Minnesota at home, they're going to feel good about that upcoming schedule that they get to play some on their home court. And then the Huskers, they face the 22nd right fighting Illini here in Lincoln and also Northwestern. Then they go to Penn State on the fourth. We'll play Rutgers and close it out with the Iowa Hawkeyes. Of course, that match against the Fighting Illini, the 22nd ranked Illini, will be right here in Lincoln and on BTN. And Mark, 11-4 on your calendar. Both of these teams right now only have one loss, so it could come down to that match on November 4th if Nebraska right. win here today against Minnesota. And while we're giving you previews of what's coming up on BTN, that match as well. Penn State and Nebraska right here on BTN on November 4th. Should be a terrific one, as this has been. 1-1 one, one here in the third, all even at 17. John Cook took the last time out. Gophers on a run right now. Three in a row for Minnesota. Pushed outside, Fecky off the top of the block. Good set behind, tap, just kind of had to punch it over. She had one-on-one -on -one there. Holman tips it. Holman found that short zone and put it down. Season high, 12th kill for Brianna Holman. And a smart shot. You can see, look at the left side blocker for Minnesota. Way in the court, doing her job because you want to go four hands in front of Holman when she's swinging. But the, the lapse there was on the left back defensive player. You have to release up for that tip and expect the ball to go there. Tipped right out, Wong Arantes. Rolfson is Doug. Here's Wilhite. Walk back. A lot of hands on swings right now, keeping things alive. And that got an arm and a kill for Wilhite. 16. She leads everyone with 16 kills. Oh, a special night she's having tonight. Her gopher team is relying on her to get these types of kills at critical points. She is coming through and wonder if Nebraska will release on her, release the middle blocker so that there's always four hands in front of her face when she is up swinging. So John Cook challenging here. I'm not sure if he thought it didn't hit Rolfson, but it, certainly from our vantage point, it went right off the side of her arm. It was out, but I think this this will be confirmed by video, but we'll take a look at it along with you. Yeah, I think so challenging yeah. a net violation. Right. I think they think that quite possibly Will Height touched the net as she was swinging through on the ball. So I believe they're going to look to see if any part of her hand or arm made contact with the net as she was swinging at the ball. So that was the previous right. swing. I believe that was the play that was in question. Might be this one right here. Almost got there. Our R2 William Stanley's down there checking it out. Uh, I think they're looking at that right ah. there to see if at the point of contact, the middle for Minnesota came Step under the, the net. Yep, yeah, and under the net. So it's amazing wow. what these coaches can see. <laughs> you know, a lot of people are looking at the ball, and this is where coaches are looking at the movement of players, and they look at something very different than what most of the people are watching. So indeed, in the net. That point wow. goes to How Coach Cook. <laughs> nice job, Coach Cook. See Bill Stanley explaining it to Hugh McCutcheons is okay. All right, if that's what the video showed. And it did. So Nebraska up by two here in the third, 1917. Still serving is Kelly Hunter. Nice roll there. On the slide, tap, 
right along the tape, and she got a benefit of the roll as well. Yeah, sometimes you get lucky on that. You really want those clean shots, doesn't hit the tape. But this one rolls in her favor as it trickles off the net, and <laughs> right there, you can see the frustration on Nebraska's <laughs> side of the net. And block late getting there as well for Nebraska. Yeah, you really don't have a defense that plays those types of shots. You play angles and sharp hits and tips, but the ones that roll off the net, really hard to get. What a great pancake there off the swing from Rolson. Holman tried to punch it over, one, two. And another free ball, tried to go deep corner. Albright was there, Rolson again tries the tip. And Minnesota getting to everything right now until that. <laughs> Holman with the kill. And again, you can see how excited this home crowd is for their Nebraska Huskers. They like what they're seeing right now. They're ahead in the third set by two. Well, there's just nowhere outside of the Big Ten where you're going to get this kind of environment. This is what Big Ten volleyball has really been about the last few years. Yeah, and it's really not a cliche that you got to bring your A game every time you step on the court because you know, the gap between the top and the bottom is not that great. You know, a lot of, I, I hear a lot and I listen to people and they say, well, so-and-so, this team should win because of this lineup and they've got this All-American and this is their record. But none of that really matters. You have to come out and you have to compete hard. It doesn't matter what your lineup looks like, what your record looks like. I'd bring your A, a game every single time you step out on the court. Well, ask Hugh McCutcheon if he had to bring his A game last night in Iowa City. Yeah. You know, Iowa is a program that's now on the rise and coming back, but still I think most people thought going into that that Minnesota would handle Iowa fairly easily and it went to five. Right, and that's why there's a mental part of the game, an emotional part of the game, and when you play an opponent that may be in the bottom part of the Big Ten Conference, maybe you're not playing with that kind of emotion and passion, but you've got to bring it every yeah. single night because these teams are hungry to get a win, and boy, if they can beat one of the top-ranked teams, not only in the conference but in the nation, boy, that can change their entire season around. So every team hungry for a win in this conference. You saw it there, but just wanted to provide a quick reminder that following our game here in Lincoln. It's Indiana and Northwestern coming up right here on BTN. Nebraska leading it in the third, 20 to 18. We're tied at one apiece. Nebraska for the match hitting 296. Minnesota 195. Huskers led in kills by Michaela Fecky with 15. Holman has 12, and Amber Rolfson with 11. So Nebraska's middles with 23 kills, and both hitting above 500. Good hustle by Fecky to keep it alive. Right back to her, why not? Little joust there, good up by Rosado. But both of these bros have been playing well. And finally, in the third try by Wilhite, she gets the kill. 16 for Wilhite. Yeah, it's a test of patience on both sides of the net. You gotta rely on your backcourt defense to make some spectacular digs. Both Libros on both sides of the net are doing just that, keeping their team in system pretty much. And then you got to get big swings on the left pin. So John Cook visiting once again with Bill Stanley. Asking for a clarification. Chris Thomas, you see the assistant to Cook's right, was also having a conversation. He's got the card in his hand. And he is going to challenge. Bill Stanley will explain what the challenge is as Hugh McCutcheon pulls his team back together at 2019 here in the third. Let's take a look at what is being disputed right now. You can take a look here to see if everything is... Ah. So away from the ball again. Might have been. Uh, you certainly saw the net, the net move beforehand. Over the and line again. Over the line. Yep. 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 
So I think it was clear that Will Height's foot was under the net in the midst of that rally. Right. And let's take a look again here. As she lands, where does her foot? I think it's this one right here. This is where her foot crosses the line and quite possibly she touches the net, so it could be two things there. Yeah, it's her foot. Yeah, once you come under the net, you see her right foot. Right. That is a violation there if it crosses that center line. And it clearly does. Does the touch also then have to happen as well, Edward? Well, and yeah, and she doesn't touch the net. It seems like her shirt almost touches the net, but I didn't see the net move there. Yeah. And we were told that Bill Stanley was looking for a net touch, that that right. was the challenge. And it's interesting if they're looking for the net touch and they see the foot going over the line. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, looking for the net touches, I believe, what they're saying. So we'll get clarification here momentarily. South Point still, Minnesota. Well, after all that, a little momentum yep. change there. Break in momentum. It's like calling a timeout. Yeah. You've got your team on the sideline, getting ready for the next play. Big solo block in the middle by Lohman. Boy, Lohman does a great job of reading the play. Rolfson coming around, and she does not falter there. Goes up strong, pressing at the point of contact on the ball. Big, huge block by, Nebraska, uh, by Minnesota. All even at 20. The block back again. Right back to Malloy, who doesn't terminate. Here's Tap. A good job and hustle to close by Holman. It looked like it was there. And right down the line goes Hart, and Alexis Hart with the kill. Tenth kill for Hart, and the Gophers have the lead. I like the way she gets high contact on that ball, then goes over her left shoulder down the line. Great move by Hart on the left pin for Minnesota. John Cook will take the timeout, 21-20. Minnesota has come from behind here in the third to take the lead. Got to respect what Minnesota is doing in terms of just staying in the fight. The moments in this match, the first set and the third set, where they were behind and not playing their best game. And so to be able to rebound and play well is really, really impressive here. Just staying together and relying on each other to make good plays. So good team effort here by Minnesota. Well, there's certainly have been some upsets in the Big Ten. And obviously, if you've been number one, and you've been upset, you've been in the Big Ten. Only picked in teams at the top this year. Nebraska knocked off by Ohio State. Penn State beat then number one Minnesota. Minnesota elevated to number one after the, the loss that Nebraska suffered. And then when Minnesota was one, they got Wisconsin moved up and knocked off Minnesota. And here is the home match that Nebraska suffered its loss against Ohio State. What a match this was for that young lady, Sam Bothy, who is just such a dominant and ex excitable player. Yeah. Really leads her team. Yeah, and Hughes did a great job for Ohio State, setting a great offense, but also her attack was something that Nebraska could not handle. That second ball attack from Hughes was deadly that night. So we'll see if Nebraska can side out out of the timeout by John Cook. The veteran Sarah Wilhite back at the line. It's served by Wilhite. Not much Nebraska could do with that, and the block. All about the pass received there. Pass was off, it forced Hunter to chase it down. Yep. 
Absolutely. Hunter chases it down. It goes to Rolfson. Triple block from Minnesota. Perfectly red, and they ate it up at the net. Minnesota looking to come back in a set for the second time this afternoon. Holman. Off the block and out. Back to within one. Well, a better pass from Nebraska results in an in-system set. Time Hunter went to Holman on the right pin. Holman wiping the ball off the block. And so now Nebraska needs a tough serve from the service line to tie this one up. Gophers have been solid in serve received today. Get in system, feed the middle, and Loman delivers. Now when the game is on the line, you want to have an insane amount of confidence in serve received. You right. want the ball to come to you. Really, you want the ball to come to you in all positions. As a hitter, you want that set, and you want to be the one that wins the point. Rosado to serve. More touches, point Minnesota. You can see how critical serve receive is. The ball was passed just a little too tight to the net. There wasn't anything that Nebraska could do offensively with that ball. Easy point there for Minnesota. Late in these two first sets, Minnesota has been the one stepping up. Gophers right now on a 6-1 run. They did they had a similar finish in set number one. That goes off the block, tipped over. Nebraska stays alive. So set point number two now upcoming for the Gophers. They're just looking for the side out. Get in system, good pass. Right, communication and backcourt is key here. Look for the ball to be served between two players. Seliger swings it outside, pounds away. Rosado was there. Hart again, just long on the swing from Hart. That was set point number two, and Hugh McCutcheon says, I'm going to take a timeout. Yep. And I love the confidence that he shows here. A little smile to his outside hitter. You got this, Alexa. Alexis, go on and swing hard. Alexis was trying to go for that line shot. She ripped the ball cross court earlier on in the rally and then tried to place this one. As you can see, it's a game of inches. It's a little bit long. Smart shot. It was the right shot. Just a little bit more top spin and that ball would have landed in. Fans here in Lincoln, certainly start them young. <laughs> Seliger Swenson having a terrific match tonight for the Gophers. Another double-double for Seliger Swenson, her eighth of the season. And leading this Gopher attack has done a terrific job and she's really distributed well. 16 kills for Will Height, 10 for Hart, 9 for Lohman. Hannah Tapp has been a bit quiet with four, but she's been effective when called upon. Yeah, Swenson, you know, she is the daughter of a fantastic player in her own day, but her mom played at Iowa State and her mom coached her. Dad was a football star at North Dakota, so she comes from some great genetics, yep. and she, she's a coach's kid, so she will remain composed. She's a smart player. So she's very aggressive from the service line as well, but her talent is dishing out that ball. Anywhere that that pass takes her, she's able to set a great offense. So she's got the mentality of a winner. She knows how to work hard. She's working hard for her team this afternoon. So out of the timeout. One side out is all the Gophers need to take the lead here in Lincoln. In front of 8,100 at the Bob Devaney Sports Center. 24-23, third set point for the Gophers. Outside, hard tip. And Nebraska gets the block. All even at 24. An interesting set selection there. Ball was passed right to the setter. You got Lohman coming in in the middle. She could have been one on one. All right, so we have a challenge by Hugh McCutcheon. He's saying that the ball did not touch the floor after the tip. So in other words, he thought the pancake was right. good, thought it should still be alive, and if it's upheld, we'll replay that point. That's right. All right, so it tip into the block, trying to reset the point. Let's look at this play here. 
great technique. Let's take a look. Oh, I like how that, yeah, that camera's zooming in perfectly. So hard to tell there. Was it, yeah. was it coming up off the floor, or was that the finger, or was it half and half? Uh, there you saw it hit the floor. You yeah. can tell by that angle it just barely hit the floor. Right. Great effort, part though. Of, yeah, part of the ball, it's like her fingertips, yeah. but you've got to get the entire ball on top of the hand, and you can see, yep, just part of that ball. But not a bad challenge for no. people to cut you in that situation. Yeah, you know, Terrific challenge. Yeah, why not? <laughs> you said, are we watching the same thing? <laughs> Both coaches have said that after challenges today, coach. <laughs> 3-0 Nebraska run here. And the ace, Rolfson comes up big. Boy, what a comeback this would be. Well, for Nebraska, they are playing clean and perfect, and that is sign of a great team coming back no errors on their side 4-0 Nebraska run this is the first set point for Nebraska the big block and Nebraska gets the third the Huskers close it out on a 5-0 run and Nebraska wins it 26 24 well Nebraska comes from behind in set number three wins it 26-24 Home court advantage since 81. Texas, the only team to knock off Nebraska in conference play in back-to-back -back years. Minnesota trying to do that here today. And boy, Minnesota had three chances there yeah. to close that out, and Nebraska gets its set point and finishes. Yeah, you, you've got to play clean at that point. That's exactly what Nebraska did. They showed competitive maturity at critical times. Kelly Hunter getting a huge block to win the set. But part of it, too, is believing in your training and feeling relaxed at the most tense moments. You want to play aggressively, but not too aggressive. You know, and you want to believe that your teammates are going to do their job on the court. And uh, Nebraska closing out that set nicely. And, Minnesota, I, I, I'm sure that they've got more fight in them. They're not happy about how that set finished up. As we head to the fourth here in Lincoln, some of you may be tuning in for the Indiana Northwestern match. You can catch that on BTN to go. That match will immediately follow the conclusion of this Minnesota and Nebraska showdown. So two sets to one, Nebraska on top as we begin the fourth. And the ace, second ace of the match, make it third ace of the match for the Gophers. Nebraska's only ace came when it was tied at 24. Celebrate Swenson, great server there from the end line. Lots of float to her serve. Into the net, called on Nebraska, point for the Gophers, and they've opened up this fourth on a 3-0 run. Don't want to burn a timeout too early. Still early here in the fourth set. Cook was considering taking a timeout here early. Oh. There's a swing by Michaela Fecky. Well, that went off the shoulder, or quite possibly the head. Let's take a look at it. Right off the shoulder, Melissa Gaynor. Seliger Swinson behind her on the slide, tap, puts it down. Hannah Tap with the kill, her fifth kill of the match. How quiet she's been tonight, and if you can get Hannah Tap rolling on that slide, and that's a good thing. That means you're in system, and, and you know, if she could tap in a couple more swings and kills for her team, that would definitely help. Brianna Holman, Nebraska's middle. With her 14th kill, that's her season high. Holman does a good job of keeping her feet active as that ball is being passed to the setter. And shuffling in, doing a good job of swinging at different parts along the net. Wong Arantes serves. <laughs> Off the top of the block goes Andy Malloy. And tapped with another one. 
A great set there. Setter was trapped for Minnesota. She's facing the net as she's setting the ball. So good job by number 11, Samantha Selinger Swenson, putting up a nice ball for her hitters to swing at. That's the fifth kill for Hannah Tapp. She had a terrific match last year here in Lincoln. 17 kills against Nebraska. So there's likely been a bit of renewed focus on Hannah Tapp for the Huskers. And there's a big block on that left side. Hart got a piece of it. Alexis Hart took that cross court angle at the point of contact. You thought the ball was going to get ripped cross court at the last minute. Closing hands seal the net. A lot of action here in Lincoln this afternoon. Nebraska on top two sets to one. Gophers with their largest lead of the match here in the fourth. It's 6 2. Gophers by four. the slide off the block, Rolfson with the kill. Let's give some credit to Kenzie Maloney for Nebraska, easily handling that serve. I like her platform. She moves to the ball nicely, and when she can get that ball up, boy, Kelly Hunter sure does have an easier time setting tempo to that right pin. Selager Swenson pulled well off the net. And the block by Rolfson. Not the swing Will Height wanted, certainly, but Rolfson got a hand on it. The game is a game of rhythm, and you want to be, you know, taking your first step as the setter's touching the ball. And when you're out of system, you just kind of wonder, when do I take my first step? Right. And uh, the advantage there went to Nebraska's block, but a frustrating serve in the net. Eighth service error for Nebraska. Katie Shaw now to serve for the Golden Gophers. Boy, nice pass by Maloney. Led to the kill by Malloy. So the serve went in between Nebraska's two passers. They're doing a two-man serve receive pattern. Like you said, Maloney does a really good job of taking that seam, the ball right between the two passers, she goes aggressively after it. You can't ask more for your passer than, than to do that. That was really nicely done. Right on point there on the slide from Seliger Swenson. And Hart tried the line and got the hand. Well, it is amazing that this young lady is just a freshman. Unbelievable performance by her tonight. Swinging aggressively with confidence, really composed for her age. 11 kills for Hart on the afternoon in her first match as a collegian. She had 14 kills. She, she came out of the block not afraid to swing away, right? <laughs> yeah, and there you see Fecky taking advantage of a smaller block on Minnesota's pin. And the thing about Fecky that makes her such a special hitter is that she's got a variety of shots and great vision. So when she goes up there, she can see those hands, and she will wipe off for a point. Just wide. Ninth service error, and those are beginning to rack up for Nebraska. You want to serve aggressive, but avoid the service errors. You just Nebraska really trying to serve tough to keep Minnesota out of system. But it's led to a few more unforced errors than they would like. Killed by Fecky. Let's give some strokes to Annika Albright. Another great defensive or back row player for Nebraska. And that time plays with you know, a ton of confidence on serve receive. And that time delivering a critical pass up to her setter. And the ace by Kelly Hunter. So one of the things that servers will try to do is go high shoulder on a player, and there you see a perfectly executed serve going high shoulder on Will Height. You see Fecky with a season high, 18 kills. She's hitting 361. Point for Minnesota. Holman called over the net. Setter's making an attempt to set the ball. You've got to let her set the ball. If she's attacking, then you can go for it as a blocker, but that time you can't touch the ball as the setter's trying to set the ball. 
Hunter chases it down, leaves it for Fecky. Lozada was there. Tap has come alive here in set number four. Yeah, whenever you have a right side player that can get their share of kills out of system or in system, boy, that's good. The offense right now for Minnesota is nicely spread out, so it really puts a lot of pressure on Nebraska's block, and they can't commit to one player at this point. Seliger Swinson has really done a nice job from the service line, and another point for the Gophers with Seliger Swinson at the line. And here's what I think Minnesota's doing a little bit better. They're playing the tips that Nebraska is sending over the block, and it's the blockers that are landing and playing the ball up. So they're able to play that perimeter in the backcourt defense, and they're telling the blockers, if you come down, it's your responsibility to play the tip. And again, it's Hannah Tapp. So Tapp really lighting it up here in the fourth. That's eight kills, a 4-0 go for run, and John Cook will take a timeout. Thirteen eight Minnesota on top of Nebraska here in the fourth set. The Huskers on top two to one. See a lot of communication here between coach, player, talking defense. On the other side, again, lots of communication. Stats are coming at them. It's interesting that every coach on the bench has a little job. They're tracking different things. Some of the coaches are dealing with a block and defense. The coaches are more responsible for the offense. One of the toughest conferences clearly in the country, the Big Ten. John Cook talked to us about that. They've hired good coaches. They've supported it. They're chartering. Uh, they are um, recruiting. Uh, and, and trying to do everything possible to, to compete in this conference. So I think there has been a major commitment across the board uh, by the Big Ten schools uh, to be, you know, to ma make this a great conference. And there is the three coaches at the top of the standings in the nation. John Cook winning his percentage of the Big Ten at 885. Hugh McCutcheon, last year's National Coach of the Year. And Kelly Sheffield has done a terrific job in his four years at Wisconsin, fastest ever Badger coach, two 100 wins. He's led them to the Sweet 16 every year he's been there. Three outstanding coaches all here in Lincoln this weekend. Of course, Nebraska knocked off Minnesota three zip on Friday night. And this is the doubleheader of top five matchups. Roman block back, Hunter outside. Rock slow getting there. And Katie Rolfson with the kill. Katie Rolfson struggling a bit. She's being held under 250. Has only been held under 250 once this year. And she's in negative right now. Well, Minnesota respects her as a hitter. And so oftentimes they are releasing or they're anticipating that she's going to get the ball. They've really scouted her angles and, and trying to defend her well. And they're really doing that nicely here, especially in this fourth set. Go back to serve now for the Gophers is Sarah Wilhite. Wilhite leading the way for the Gophers this afternoon with 16 kills. Andy Malloy on the left side. A nicely placed serve by Minnesota. Short, tried to put some pressure on Nebraska's passing game. And Kelly Hunter able to take a ball and better it, putting it nicely out to the left pin, which results in a big point here for Nebraska. Terrific slide there by Tapp, Hannah Tapp. Well, Hannah Tapp starts her approach in the middle of the court, runs a slide. Let's take a look at it again. You see her three quick steps, pulling back with that arm and snapping through really fast and hard. And the ace. Minnesota threatening to run away here in set number four. 
eight kills here in this set for Hannah Tao. Well, they're serving incredibly well right now, aggressively, and you can see how that ball gets served to the left side of the serve receive passer for Nebraska, really forcing her to make a move and then angle the platform back into the court. So tough move to make in serve receive. Hart with another kill. Up by seven, largest lead of the match for Minnesota. Well, that's an All-American swing right there. Take a look at how sharp that ball lands. She's inside the court. Wow, Alexis Hart with a great cross-court kill. Want to remind you, if you're tuning in to watch Indiana Northwestern, you can catch that on btn to go We will head to that Indiana Northwestern match immediately following this Nebraska-Minnesota showdown here in Lincoln. And there again is Alexis Hart, and this is all Minnesota here in the fourth. Yeah, Minnesota, you've got to be pleased if you're a Minnesota fan. Their backcourt defense is keeping the ball alive and then taking aggressive swings on that transition attack. They are looking great. Rosado in the backcourt just being a stable force for the Gophers right now. Minnesota hitting almost 600 here in this fourth set. Entering the game for Nebraska, those were not boos, they were cheering for Boonder, Olivia Boonder, who just came into the match, and that is the kill from Liv Boonder, the native of Waverly, Nebraska, in her sophomore year. You gotta like when you come in off the bench and you get the much needed kill. Smart shot, just that tip that goes deep to the corner. It's kind of been a spark plug for Nebraska off of the bench this year. Nebraska trailed at Michigan State. Ruger came off the bench, had eight kills to lead Nebraska in a comeback win against the Spartans. Nebraska on the slide there. Cuts into that lead, it's now to six. This will be really interesting to see what Nebraska can do, the competitive maturity that we saw in the third set. Can they uh, do that again here in the fourth set and chip away one point at a time? Out of the back row, Will Heights blocked. Three straight for Nebraska, and Hugh McCutcheon's going to take a timeout. Now, if you're going to set that back row attack, you've got to go up aggressively. And if it's not there, then you've got to go for the corners. You can see she kind of jumped and was leaning back instead of reaching forward at the point of contact. So not a very strong hit, just swallowed up there by Nebraska's block. Must win set here for the Golden Gophers in the fourth. Down two sets to one. Had the momentum, everything going their way. The last thing that Cuba Cutcher wants is this crowd to get back into it. And Nebraska to pick up a bit, a bit of momentum and get back in. They're down by five here. Timeout for Cuba Cutcher. And what's the message here in this moment? Well, really, just to regroup, take a take a deep breath here, and um, you know you're ahead by a few, but you can't feel comfortable now that you're ahead. You've got to play aggressively. Last couple of swings for Minnesota were anything but aggressive, but you know you've got to defend at a high level. So right now, kind of regrouping, looking at who's across the net, what you can expect from the blockers that are blocking against you, and really just. That refocus to stay in system. So taking a little bit of a, a breather here. Reset your focus yep. and get right back at it. Key to Nebraska's success through the first three sets was the play of Justine Wong Orantes, who had 28 digs through the first three sets. There you see her in the Libero jersey. Has none here in set number four. So they're her maybe identifying where she's at and going away from her. She's been so effective. Wong Arantes has. 34 digs in a match is a Nebraska record. She had 28 through the first three sets. Eighteen thirteen. Good up by Maloney. Deep corner. Just long. You saw the reaction from Thaliana Lee's Rosado at the back, kind of double fist pump as it was just long. Like I said, it is a game of inches, not feet. Take a look at how close that ball is. <laughs> it would have been a spectacular kill, but did not land in the court. Point goes to Minnesota. Shot to serve. Good up. Hart off the top of the block. Boonder has a chance, and she's blocked. So Paige Tapp with the block. 
Well, I'm going to give the setter credit uh, for that Seliger one. Seliger, <laughs> you bet. Yeah. Yep. Yep, yep. So Seliger Swinson with the hand on it. Hey, I got I to look out for those setters. <laughs> Get enough credit. <laughs> Nice slide and the kill by Rolson. Well, a statement type of kill. She goes up strong. And this is telling her team something. Let's go, let's fight right here. The focus, the competitive instincts that she has are unbelievable. Love that kid. Good coverage by Wong Arantes. The same by Rosado. Hard off the top of the block and the kill. Well, that's a shot that's practiced. You go high hands. You want to hit the ball somewhat flat. Not a lot of top spin on it. You're aiming for those hands. So real veteran move by the freshman for Minnesota, Alexis Hart. She needs to come in and serve some balls. <laughs> She and you know what I think you know we talk about how coachable she is I think she will see that that is an aspect of her game that she can get better at right. and as competitive as she is she will put in the time to become a more effective server. Sydney Townsend now will serve with Nebraska down by six here in the fourth. Seliger Swenson outside well, nice up by Townsend on a wide open swing from Wilhite. Good. Top defensively did not get down. Bump set. And again, the swing from Wilhite Doug. Holman with the tip. Great rally. And I believe it's number seven for Nebraska, Sydney Townsend making some key digs. Let's take a look at this. Greatly, a great tip placed right there in the left front area of the court. Again, when your blocker moves in, left side blocker, your left back digger, you want to move up the line so you can see the ball around the block. You can't stay deep because that area of the court is so open. And tap goes around the block. Page tap now back to serve for Minnesota. You got a little of that. Gophers serving the ball here to Rolson. She delivers a perfect pass. And you see Fecky height advantage, high contact point, goes over top of the block. Nicely done by the NCAA player of the tournament there last year. She did a great job for her team. Line, no touch point, Nebraska. Well, the Gophers would love nothing more than just to side out here right. to the victory in set number four and just prevent a run is what they're looking to do right now. And they're stacked on the left side. Both hitters are in front of the setter. We'll see what kind of route they run. Run the slide and the block by the Huskers. And Hugh McCutcheon will take another timeout as Nebraska has pulled back to within three. Well, Minnesota saw three set points in the third go by the wayside. And now Nebraska on a 6-2 run to pull them within three. Great crowd here in Lincoln. Well, let's take a look at how they did the 6-2 run. Great reach in by Fecky. Great read on that to seal the cross court, force your hitter to hit down the line, and she couldn't hit down the line. Nicely placed block there. Shuffling your feet to the outside is critical. Taking your eye off the ball as a blocker and looking at the hitter. Super important if you want to be a good blocker in this conference. Well, we've just seen some terrific middles this weekend from Minnesota and Nebraska. These are your All-Americans. Hannah Page, the Tap Twins. Molly Lohman has had a big night tonight. Amber Rolfson and Brianna Holman have been uh, Outstanding for Nebraska, both getting above 500. Rolfson and Holman both with 15 kills, both with two attack errors, both with 25 swings, both hitting 520. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, all of these kids, they just 
are such great athletes. And big kids used to be slow, not anymore. <laughs> that's right. These big kids yeah. have got great speed, and that's what makes them all American middles. They move so well. Hit a high ball, great point of contact, and they just got those great arms. Top spin hits on the ball. They can see where they want to place the shot. So we are seeing some fantastic middles. These two teams. And those middles don't get going without a terrific night from your setters. And right. there is Kelly Hunter, who has a career high 58 assists already tonight. The Gophers, though, just three away from evening this at two sets apiece. Nebraska trying to claw its way back into it. Outside. Another dig from Wong Orantes. The tip try, good cover. And the kill by Will Height. That's a big swing out of the timeout. Gets him to within two for Will Height. Yep, being in system, jump setting, pushing that ball low and fast to the pin, gives your outside hitter the advantage. And then just that fearless, competitive swing from Will Height. Gets her team in a nice, comfortable spot here in the fourth set. You just did not want Nebraska to get to within two at that point, given what happened last set. You start maybe a question. Great up there by Rosado. And then again, Holman puts it down. And again, another important, I believe, side out for Minnesota here. Well, for sure, Minnesota's got to play clean here. They want to get this point. But look at that all-out dig by Rosado. And then Holman just one on one takes it and just shoves it down. <laughs> just throwing it down in the right back corner. So back to serve for Nebraska will be Michaela Fecky. 6'3 sophomore outside from West Point, Iowa. Number two recruit in the nation out of high school when she came to Nebraska last year. And we've got number 17, Annika Albright, playing front row for Nebraska. Typically ah. she's a DS. Tough serve. Free ball for Nebraska. Longarantis comes up. They go to Holman. Pushed over. Block. That was Albright getting a hand on it. There's Wilhite. Why not? Puts it right down the line. And a huge point there for Wilhite. And that's a big time swing just down the line. I love how her hand finishes high at the point of contact. Block there, great cover, and then perfectly placed. And I will height showing why she's a top player in the conference in kills per set. 18th kill of the night for Will height Nearly got down outside. Albright fires away. They called the touch. I've always liked Annika Albright in the back court. Didn't know she could swing for some key points in the front court. Looks like the reason could be Nebraska could be out of subs. Um, real important side out here for Minnesota. Could be a game winning side out. Set could point be. number two for the Gophers. Yep. One on one. Oh. On, just got a hand on it. Tough shot by Albright. Swing, wide, long, check that long and no touch. Nebraska to within two. Third set point upcoming for the Gophers. So if you're Minnesota, you can't play tight. No. You just have to go and swing to win. And that's exactly, exactly what Alexis Hart attempted to do. See if she can do better here. Longerontis with the serves. Seliger Swinson, they run the quick. Loman didn't get it down. Outside, Albright with the tip try. Good coverage by Hart. Behind the tap. Tap got the touch and the kill. And the Gophers have even this at two. Well, you knew it was going to be a good one. Tap delivers that game winner. Wow, it's going five. Take a look at it again, at it again. right off of the bro's head. Justine Wangarantas could not control that swing. We've got a fifth in Lincoln. We've got a set number five in Lincoln, Nebraska, as the number three ranked Golden Gophers take the fourth 25-22 over Nebraska. And here are your Big Ten teams in the top 25. Nine total, Nebraska number one at 17 and one, the Gophers Number three at 15 and three. The number two team is Texas. 
Texas played this weekend. They won two. So, Audrey, what have, who's your new number one if Minnesota happens to pull this off? Well, I'd love to say somebody from the Big Ten. So yeah. I'd like to say Minnesota, but it could possibly be Texas. You know, Texas, as you said, went 2-0 this weekend. They did go three or five sets, excuse me, with Texas Tech. So, you know, they had a similar match as Minnesota had against Iowa. So it's going to be hard to tell. I, my vote always goes to the Big Ten, though. I'm with you. <laughs> I think the winner of this right now is your number one team next week. It will be a race to 15 at this point. You know, it's all about serving and passing and who can be in system more than the opponent. So right now, Minnesota's got serve and they've got to just set a tone here by serving aggressively, serving seams between the passers. So here we go with the fifth. As Audrey said, a race to 15, they'll switch sides at eight. Nebraska with the first opportunity there in the first, and the miscommunication leads to the kill for Rolfson. Here's a look at the numbers through four. Yeah, I, I always look at hitting percentage. Blocks look about even. The service errors, though, yeah. for Nebraska really starting to play a difference here. Of course, in the fifth set, you want to be aggressive, but you want to eliminate those errors. And we'll see who's got composure from the service line to really ramp up their service game. Holman off the block, and she got the kill. Nebraska up two zip early. Again, Holman doing a really good job of seeing when that blocker, the wing blocker, comes in to block her. You're going to see, here you see the shuffle step by the right side blocker. She goes high off the blocker's hands and seems to always land in that right front area of the court. He's serve. Good pass. Seliger Swinson behind her. Andy Malloy is there for the solo block. And Malloy doing exactly what her team needs, setting a tone here. Look at how she reaches in hard with that left hand, taking away cross court. Nowhere for Minnesota's attacker to go. Huge block there by Malloy on the left pin. All of these top-ranked teams that have been in here this weekend, Nebraska, Minnesota, Wisconsin, attack so well from behind the center, run the slide so well. That has to be one of the points of emphasis if you're going to be successful against one of the teams that does that so well. Is can your left side block stand up to that? Well, yeah, and it's a, it's a position that's trained immensely in right. practice because the slide attack is really hard to block. It's the speed and then the angle of which it's getting hit. And you often have to respect the setter if you're a left side blocker. And if there are three hitters and they're running a double quick, well, that's even more intense and puts a lot of pressure on yeah. that left side blocker. So it's a position that if you have somebody as a left side attacker that can swing but also be a proficient blocker, then you are really ahead of the game. Nebraska doing a nice job on the block here tonight. A season high, 14 blocks for Nebraska. So you've seen Big Ten teams play all across in every venue. Who do you like on the slide? Who's who's uh, number one in the league on the slide? There's a few. <laughs> yeah, there, there are there are Washington. Many ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but mine is Ohio State. Sam Sam Bothia, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what I love about her is the swagger that she has, and everybody has confidence. And then there's Taylor's confidence, which just kind of sets herself apart from others. Something about that kid. I, I mean, I'll tell you what. She's she's pretty special. You and I were talking about yeah. that yesterday. Sam Bothy, just an outstanding player for the Buckeyes. So 3-0 here in set number five. Nebraska off to the quick start. The timeout by Hugh McCutcheon. Let's see what they drew up out of that timeout. In system, push down the line. One-on-one, -on -one. Rolson delivers one-on-one. -on -one. And Nebraska with the four-zip lead. And a four-zip lead sometimes can seem insurmountable in these races to 15. That's right, Wong Arantes taking control of that tip, putting it into the hands of Kelly Hunter. And then where do you go? If you need a point, you go to your All-American on the right pin, Olsen. The good news, it's a four-zip lead early, not a four-point lead late. As Wong Arantes is there, they'll go to Rolfson again. Good up there by Gator. Doesn't clear the net. Now you talk about crazy momentum shifts. 
It's going back and forth, and this is what Big Ten volleyball is all about. But at this point, you've got to remain composed if you're Minnesota. Believe in your training and believe that you can come back here. You've got to chip away. This is a critical point. Crowd into it here in Lincoln. Net violation called in Nebraska, and Holman knew it. She went up for the block, shook her head, knew she had drugged the net. Yep. And McCutcheon breathing a sigh of relief because he already used a timeout. Really needed that, right. uh, that point because he couldn't burn the second one. So back to serve now is Sarah Wilhite. And the ace by Wilhite. Boy, service errors and serve receive have been a bit of a challenge for the Huskers here this afternoon. And a great serve placed right between two players there. You see them knocking into each other, so you've got to call it and be aggressive on serve receive. Blocked by Holman, 15 blocks in the match for Nebraska. Well, Alexis Hart learning as she's going along here. Roll shot isn't a bad choice. It just has to go over top of the block. So she just kind of put that right in the teeth of the block. And I <laughs> love the celebrations that I'm seeing from the bench on both sides of the net. Off the top. Pushed outside into the net called in Nebraska. Tough ball for mm -hmm. Hunter to handle. Is it? That pass was very tight to the net. Daliana Lise Rosado now to serve. 5'9", junior out of Puerto Rico. Boy, tough serve there. Tip. Good coverage by Wilhite. And the block. Nebraska's block has come alive. Amber Rolfson with the solo roof. Yeah, let's take a look at it again. And I love the reach. She figured that the ball was going to be hit left back, and she sealed that portion of the net. Back row attack out by Will Height. Off the block. Was it out? No. Touched the line. Blocked right on the line. Big point for the Gophers. And I believe that was Paige Tap. Let's take a look at it again. Reaching back in, and you just, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're looking and, and hoping that it's out, but when it's close, you just want to go for the ball. They both called it out, right. and they both knew it was in. <laughs> 7-4. On the slide. They are living with the Rolfsons right now. Yeah, and Maloney doing a really good job again of Feeling confident in serve receive. Putting that ball high to the setter. It's all about serve and pass. And right now, Nebraska looking comfortable here, up by four in the fifth. So the two sides switch benches. And this crowd into it here in Lincoln. Four point Nebraska lead. Always been interested to watch body language as the two teams right. switch benches. Who's looking confident? Whose shoulders are back? You just got to look into the eyes of your teammates six inches away from you, and you know, you know who it. the fighters are on your team. And as a setter, I used to always do that. Look at my hitters. Who wants the ball when it's a critical point of the match? Well, there's one of them that certainly wants it. She's just a freshman, Alexis Hart. Off the tape and just wide for Hart. And Huma Kutchin will take the timeout. 16 kills for Amber. That ties her season high. Back to back matches. She's had 16 kills. And I think her resume for Big Ten Player of the Week is complete. We'll be back in Lincoln in just a minute. We're in the fifth set in Lincoln. 9 4, Nebraska on top. I want to remind you, if you're tuning in to see Indiana Northwestern, you can catch that right now on BTN to go or immediately following this match. 
Becky tried deep corner. Rosado was there. Hart goes line and got the kill. Big kill for the Gophers. Back to within four. All right, so in a timeout, important to reset your focus. If you're Minnesota, don't worry about the score necessarily. Just come out and compete for Nebraska. They definitely want to keep the pressure. If they can get this 10th point, it'll be a momentum advantage, a mental advantage for them here in the fifth set. Five up with five to go would be big. On the slide, tap. Just touched it. One on one. Nebraska got a hand on it. Hunter. Into the net, called on Minnesota. Big error on the Gophers. You know, the Gophers know how to come back. They were down in the fifth set, six to nine against Iowa. Right. And they came back to win that fifth set. So don't count them out of this one. This next point for Nebraska is critical, though. Need to be tough from the service line. Block and dig for a point. Tough serve. Back row swing by Albright. Boy, she is not afraid to attack in big moments. Beyond the 10 foot line, Albright delivers. And number six, Rolson making a key dig and right back. And then you see how the rally ends there on a nice aggressive swing by one of my favorite players wearing that Nebraska uniform, Annika Albright. And the block. So Nebraska has opened it up here in the fifth, 12-5. Personal highs all over the board for these two teams. Wong Arantes with 34 digs in a match. That ties the Nebraska record for a match. Oh, great tip. Nice touch by the veteran there, Sarah Wilhite. The passes for Minnesota have been there. They just have to execute their attacks. And Wilhite does just that by placing a little tip over the block. But prior to that, some unforced errors only got Minnesota in a tight situation. On the slide, wide by Holman. Minnesota, one point at a time, can get back into this. Only down by five now. Nebraska, three away from the match. Yeah, you got to play clean. You got to let it all hang out on the service line and then rely on your block and backcourt defense to get you some points. Kelly Hunter on the second touch. Well, let's take a look at this. You got Taylor Morgan for Minnesota in the middle front area of the court. Hunter just showing why she's one of the best setters in the conference. Just knows when to attack and how to attack that second ball. Good defense by Nebraska to keep it alive. Will Height with the swing off the top. Longerontes keeps it up. Tip. Not there. Will Height blocked and down. That is 10 blocks in the match for Holman. She's got a double-double. 17 kills, 10 blocks. Yeah, she's a stud. She is fantastic. Easy play to read out of system. You know where the ball's going. Takes an athletic kid to reach up and over. Big point for Nebraska. Match point for the Huskers. Will Height, not yet. You gotta love when the ball goes to your big time hitter and she delivers for you, but this is going to be an uphill climb for Minnesota. They have to play absolutely perfectly in order to capture the fifth set. Fecky, good. Up by Minnesota, Will Height rolls it over. Holman tried the block. Goes right back to Will Height again. One on one. Off the block and out, and Nebraska survives. What a battle here in Lincoln this afternoon. The number three ranked Golden Gophers and the top ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers, and Nebraska wins it in the fifth, 15 to eight. Nebraska's eighth consecutive win over a top 10 team.